to the Lord. Amen. For this opportunity to worship together, even though we're in a virtual sanctuary, we're grateful that God has given us a day we've never seen before, we'll never see again. Amen. And I told somebody not too long ago that because God is the greatest power, because God has been so good to me, it's not that I need God for, do, for God to do anything else for me. Amen. I don't need another reason. All I need is another an opportunity. All I need is another reason or another opportunity to be able to give God praise for what he's already done because he's already done more than enough. I wish you could put that in the comment section. Amen. Perhaps the world has forgotten that they're looking at how difficult amen, things may be right now, but I'm encouraged today, amen, that God has already done enough. And he doesn't, if he doesn't do another thing, amen, he's been better than good this morning. Amen. And we give him praise, glory, and honor. Amen. I'm going to calm down and sit down, but I feel good in my sanctified soul. Amen. Because he is worthy to be praised. And we're grateful that you've, amen, taken the opportunity to visit and to join with us today in virtual worship. I would like to also uh, encourage everyone, as we always do, amen, to take an opportunity and to visit our website at emmanuelnashville.org. And as you go on the website, you're able to go there and to give your seed, to sow your tithe and offer it into the storehouse. Amen. If you don't want to use the the, the, the online or use the amen the website that you're also able to mail in your gift amen at P.O. Box 1196 Hendersonville, Tennessee amen 37077 amen I'm going to get ready to go into the word of the Lord but before we do as well I want to encourage you if you haven't already please be sure and to download the My Sermon Notes app in the Google Play Store or in the Apple store and as you do so you're able to follow along with today's message as well as other Bible studies and messages that have already been uploaded. Would you help me celebrate, amen, the minstrels, amen, and the singers that are in the house this morning? Amen. You, you're not able to be here, but the glory of the Lord is in the sanctuary this morning. Amen. And we used to sing a song that says, as the praises go up, the blessings come down. And surely I can feel the presence of the Lord in this house this morning. I said I was going to come and take, uh, take it easy, and, and it's Father's Day, so I'm going to do what I've got to do, but I wasn't going to do too much. But as I begin to hear the praises going forth, and, and I told uh, Elder Smith, as I was coming up the stairs, I was a little gimpy. I know that's the country terminology. I was a little gimpy. Uh, I had a little hitch in my back. But as I sat in the sanctuary and began to get in praise and worship, I declare to you right now, amen, I got no get up in my step. Hallelujah. But I feel good down in my sanctified soul because God is well.
chapter number 6, reading verses 8 and 9. Genesis chapter number 6, reading verses 8 and 9. When you have it, say amen. amen. And the Bible reads, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. I want to read that again. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. For Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. I want to talk very briefly this morning, specifically to the fathers, as we speak to everyone, but I want to speak specifically to the fathers, being that it is Father's Day, from this subject of Daddy, don't quit. Daddy, don't quit. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I don't desire to bore your patience this morning by going through our Sunday school lesson as it would be uh, in rehearsing the story and the account of Noah and perhaps uh, most of you that are watching and that are gathering with us this morning are familiar uh, with the story of Noah. However, uh, I believe that it is imperative that we realize that everyone may not be uh, uh, very familiar with this story, so if you would just bear with me for a moment, as God would help me to, I want to pull out just a few items in this account that I believe to be paramount and significant in us being victorious in our walk with God. When we consider the story of Noah, and we go back into the book of Genesis, as we understand that the book of Genesis is the book of beginnings. And when we look at the book of Genesis, we often, unfortunately, because of Adam's disobedience uh, to the commandment that God had given him not to eat, amen, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, because uh, Adam failed to maintain that commandment and found himself in disobedience, then we find that sin and transgression of the law of God has now entered into the world. When we read over in the book of Romans chapter number 5, uh, particularly in verse number 12, it says, Therefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so now we see that death passed upon all men, for the Bible declares, for that all have sinned. In other words, what the writer is telling us here in the book of Romans, chapter number 5, is that the cause of Adam's disobedience to what God had commanded him to do, and because all of humanity now comes from, amen, comes through the loins of Adam, then uh, all of us, amen, have now uh, been infected with the sin problem. And I, I want to pause for a minute. I want to tell you today that I've said it before that does not matter how good and then you are in and of yourself. And perhaps there are some very good individuals that are watching this morning, but we have to understand that because Amen. Of Adam's initial amen, stance of disobedience and transgression against the commandment of God for mankind, now, no matter how good any of us are, we're not good enough. I wish you would just put that in the comment section. Perhaps, amen, you may have surrounded yourself with individuals that seem to be somewhat self righteous. Man, not necessarily attempting to be self righteous, but cause of their perspective, amen, as to how good they've been, uh, they give, amen, all that they have, and they spend much of their time in philanthropy and giving to humanity, but still, we must understand that the Bible declares, amen, that all of our righteousness, all of the good that we can do, brothers and sisters, the Bible declares that it is as a filthy rag. In other words, Man, my righteous ability, amen, is insignificant and incapable of rendering me justified before God. 
So the Bible declares that because of Adam's sin now, disobedience, and his disobedience of sin, then death has come into the world. And all of us, then the Bible declares, have been born in sin and shapen in iniquity. But as we're reading, as we're reading through the scriptures this morning, I want us uh, to take note first, amen, to the reality that as we're reading the scriptures, this is the first time in which we see the word grace to appear in the Bible. From this point in the book of Genesis, amen, the Bible has taken its time to delineate and to trace mankind from his creation, amen, up until this point of wickedness in our text. Amen. By which God now has enacted a divine judgment and punishment upon mankind. Uh, when we look at this, we see and we conclude that as dark, amen, as times are in, Ad amen, in Adam's and in Noah's day, for the Bible declares that in Noah's day, men's heart, amen, the thoughts of men's imagination was continuously evil. In other words, Faith, faith, faith now 
word. Faith is active obedience to a word that has been spoken by God. Amen. Noah's moved in faith. He's moved in fear to obey what God has spoken to him. Amen. Because Noah has been faithful to move in faith. Amen. Now Noah becomes a recipient of grace. Man, that word grace there means not only the favor of God, but that word grace there now speaks to a hope and to a divine sufficiency that is supplied by God. I like that because we got to understand that if we're going to be good daddies and good fathers, then we must be men of faith, of active obedience in response to what Thank you, Lord. Let me just move on here so we can all go and eat. Well, when we began to consider these words in the text here, I want to suggest to us three reasons as to why Noah was able to find grace in the eyes of God.
nature already corrupt himself. Oh, no. 
escape out of his generation. My God knows faith to keep on walking in the midst of my God of ridicule to keep on walking in the face of disaster and destruction. But Noah kept on walking with God. He walked into the hero's hall of faith. He walked out of ruins into the face of new possibilities as he stepped off of the ark because he kept on walking with God. I got to quit now, but I want to say this before I go. I know that men in our generation Especially, but not exclusively black men. My God have been now put in a place whereby we've been marginalized. We've been put in a place by which we've been ostracized. We've been put in a place by which some have been institutionalized. And we've been put in a place whereby many of Thank you. 